welcome to this online lesson. I am Mr. Hoven, and today we're going to be starting our new unit, Westward Expansion, and we're going to be looking at the idea of the early movement west and manifest destiny. We're going to be looking at the reasons why people move west, which you can probably see in this picture here. There's quite a few to actually look at. We're also going to be looking at some of the events that happened, or the particular people that were involved with this initial movement west. So let's go ahead and get started. So the drive for Americans to move west was the idea of manifest destiny. And this was the belief that the United States was destined by God to extend its boundaries all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Quite simply put, it was the belief that the United States must expand its borders from one sea, the Atlantic, to the other, the Pacific. So the U.S. should expand itself from sea to shining sea. And the destination for many of these early settlers was the Oregon Territory. By the 1820s, white settlers had occupied much of the land between the Appalachian Mountains and the Mississippi River. Families in search of good farmland kept moving further west. Few, however, settled on the Great Plains between the Mississippi and the Rockies. The plains were considered too dry to support settlement. Instead, settlers headed to lands in the far west. Americans first heard about the area known as the Oregon Country in the early 1800s. Oregon country was a huge region west of the Rocky Mountains, and today it includes Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and parts of Wyoming, Montana, and western Canada. But there was a problem with all these settlers continuing to move west, because in the early 1800s, four countries claimed Oregon. They were the United States, Great Britain, Spain, and Russia. Of course, Native American groups had lived there for centuries. However, the United States and European nations gave little thought to Native American rights. But in 1818, the U.S. and Britain agreed to occupy Oregon jointly, which means that they both decided to kind of co-rule the Oregon country. Citizens of each nation would have equal rights in Oregon. Spain and Russia had few settlers there, so they withdrew their claims from Oregon country. At first, only a handful of Europeans or, or Americans traveled to the Oregon country. Most were fur traders. Since furs could be sold for huge profits in China, Merchants from New England stopped along the Oregon coast before crossing into the Pacific. In fact, so many Yankee traders visited Oregon to buy furs that in some areas the, in, the Native American name for a white man was Boston. Only a few hardy trappers actually settled in Oregon. These adventurous men hiked through the region's vast forests, trapping animals and living off the land. They were known as mountain men. Mountain men were admired as rugged individualists, people who follow their own independent course in life. Their colorful appearance set them apart from ordinary society. Their shirts and trousers were made of animal hides and decorated with porcupine quills. Their hair reached their shoulders. Pistols and tomahawks hung from their belts. Kind of thinking of what a mountain man must look like, I always get the vision of Psy from Duck Dynasty. And those gentlemen, I would think that mountain men would resemble some of the things that they do as well. The first white Americans to settle permanently in Oregon country were missionaries. Among them were Marcus and Narcissa Whitman. The couple married in 1863 and set out for Oregon, where they planned to convert local Native Americans to Christianity. Missionaries like the Whitmans helped stir up interest in Oregon. Eager to have others join them, the missionaries sent back glowing reviews about the land. People throughout the nation read these reports, and by 1840, more and more Americans were making the long and difficult journey to Oregon. So why go west? Uh, this was a journey that was 2,000 miles, and it usually was made in about five months. They were going at a very snail's pace of 14 miles a day, but and that time was actually considered making good time. Um, pioneers were attracted by stories of fertile soil and bountiful crops, stories of wheat that grew taller than a man and turnips five feet around, and these stories touch off a race to get to Oregon, known as Oregon Fever. And by the beginning of 1843, wagon trains left every spring for Oregon along the Oregon Trail. Families planning to go west along the Oregon Trail met in Missouri, Independence, Missouri, that is, in the early spring. And by mid-April, they were on their way to Oregon. Now, on the trail, families woke at dawn to a bugle blast. Everyone had a job to do. Girls helped their mothers prepare food. Men and boys harnessed the horses and oxen. And by 6 a.m., the cry of, Wagons Ho! rang across the plains. So they began traveling at about s until about 7 p.m. Belongings, as they went along, were discarded. A lot of times, people overpacked. So they started with a large amount of gear, and as they crossed rivers and scaled mountains, they discarded belongings to lighten their wagons. So things would be strewn about all along the trail. So this was not an easy journey to make. 
Now the trail west held many dangers. During the spring, travelers risked drowning as they floated their wagons across rain-swollen rivers. In the summer, they faced blistering heat on a treeless plain. Early snows could block passes through the mountains, and getting heavy wagons past these obstacles was hard work. But the biggest threat was sicknesses. Cholera and other diseases could wipe out a whole wagon train. Because the travelers lived so close together, diseases would spread very quickly. Well, that about wraps things up for today. Before we go, though, however, I just want to recap with you some of the reasons individuals had for going west. First was natural resources, new land to plant crops and gain money, gold. The early mountain men were also looking for gold and furs, furs to trade. So those natural resources, they're looking for the rich farmland to set up and grow crops. There was a chance to spread the religious beliefs, such as what Marcus and Nassissa Whitman did with their missionary work. And there was the progress moving west. The railroads were being created. As you remember from the initial slide on this, it showed the railroads and power lines being set up. So progress, jobs, and a chance to make money were also in the west. And that's something we're going to start with in class. Why do people move? And why would people want to move west? Kind of a review of this lesson. And we'll see you then.